Again, welcome to Statistics course. In this lectures, we're going to learn how to construct frequency distributions for quantitative data. Normally, we use the frequency distribution table to organize our data without doing any calculations. So as we, we start with an example, but again, our main objective here is constructing frequency distributions for quantitative data. So the example here, we have a data set containing the heart rates of 50 students is given below. So we have 50 students, and that means 50 values of a heart rate per minute. However, looking at this individual data, it's not very revealing. Even with only 50 observations, there are just too many data values to get a good idea of the measurements. So the best way to do this is to organize this data set. Now, instead of trying to examine or analyze the 50 data values, a frequency distribution can be provide a summary of the heart rate data. So examine the frequency distribution and, and analysis can look at a table that has low five categories or five frequency that's reducing the complexity. So again, the frequency distribution table, we use it to organize our data. So in this case, again, an analysis can look at a table that has only five categories and five frequency. By doing that, reducing the complexity of the data set. So this is the frequency distribution of the heart rate. We have the heart rate based on categories between 57 to 66. Per minute, we have only two students. Between 67 to 76, we have 10 students. Between 77 to 86, per minute, we have 32 students. Between 87 to 96, per minute, we have five. Between 97 to 106, heart rate per minute, we have only one. So based on this, we can, again, analysis can pick any category to see. Now, it is easy to see that overwhelming majority of the heart rates are between 77 and 86, because 77 and 86 is 32 majority of the students. Also further heart rates above 96 and below 67 are uncommon. So again, frequency distribution, basically organize our data and we can find a meaningful pattern. So the, the pattern we can find here is that most students heart rate is between 77 to 86. No student have heart rate is over 116 or below 56. So here, this conclusion will be considerable more difficult to establish without organization. So without organizing the, the data set, it's very difficult to say that between 77 to 86, a uh, majority of the students have that heart rate. I mean, it's possible, but it will take time. We need to count each individual. But when we use the frequency distribution, we don't need to count. Everything is organized for us. So now, how do we construct a frequency distribution? That's the steps we shall follow here. First thing, we have to know how many categories. For example, here, we, the heart rate, we have five categories. We can decide to have four. We can decide to have seven. It depends. But there's a procedure we can follow. Here, we say the first step, determine how many classes should be in the distribution. So we need to determine that. Most of the time, we are tell not to have more than seven classes. Now, after we know the number of classes, we can determine the class width. You can see here the class width are the same. From 57 to 66, that gives us nine. From 67 to 76, that's also nine. 77 to 86, that's so the class width here is nine. The class width have to be the same. But there's a way we can do it, very good way. To find the class width, Look at the maximum value minus the minimum value, then divide by the number of classes. So in this case, if I want to find the class width here, 
I look at the data. If the data, the minimum value is 57 and the maximum value is 106, then I'll say 106 minus 57 divided by five. First thing we need to do is determine how many classes we want. And we can go to the actual data set and we can look for the minimum value, which is, it seems like minimum value is 70, 69, 68, 65, 65. Oh, sorry, we have 62 also. So the minimum value is 62, I can see here. And the maximum value should be 10. We don't have any hundreds here. Okay, we don't have any hundred. So 94 will be the maximum. Okay, so if the maximum is 94 or whatever value it is, then we find the difference of the two, then we divide by five. So that's the second step. Now, when we know the class width, that's it. We can start to construct. But now in order to construct, you can see here, we have a lower limit. Our lower limit is 57. Our upper limit is 106. Actually, we don't have no 106, but we set it. So there's a way we can find that. That's to find the class limit. The lower class limit is the smallest number that can belong to a particular class. And the upper class limit is the largest number that can belong to a class. After that, we can determine the frequency of each class. Frequency of each class means we count. We're going to count on each category how many we have in each class. As we did for the heart rate, we count between 57 and 66. We look at the table, we have only two, then 10, 32, et cetera. Next also, we can find the relative frequency. Actually in our heart rate, Frequency, we have only two columns. We have the first column for the classes. Then we have second column for the frequency. Now we can have a third column for relative frequency. Relative frequency is like getting the proportion. So for example, the total students are 50. So the relative frequency in the class from 55 to 66 will be two divided by 50. The relative Frequency for, from 67 to 76 will be 10 divided by 50. The relative frequency from 77 to 86 is 32, so it will be 32 divided by 50. So relative frequency is more or less like looking for proportion of each part. So that's why if you had all the relative frequency, the answer would be one. So a relative frequency of any class is the number of observation in that class divided by the total number of class observation. So if the observation in that class is two, I divide by the total observation, which is 50 students. So the formula is normal in the class divided by total number of observation. Then also we can have a fourth column, which is called cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency means we had all the, the frequency from previous classes. So we start from the first one, if it's two, the next is 10, then that means two plus 10 will be 12. If next frequency is 10, we have 12 to 10. So fre cumulative frequency, the sum of the frequency of a particular class and all the preceding class. Then we have a cumulative relative frequency. So if I know the cumulative frequency in one particular class, I will divide by the observation. So is the proportion of observation in particular class and all the preceding classes. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. In these lectures, we learn how to construct a frequency distribution table with quantitative data. And again, the main purpose of a frequency distribution table, we use it to organize our data. Our example here, we saw only two columns, but as we can see, we can have up to four or five columns. First column for our classes, category of classes, second column will be the frequency, third column is the relative frequency, then the fourth column can be cumulative relative frequency, or cumulative frequency, then cumulative relative frequency. So totally we can have up to five different columns. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you for these lectures.